Hey guys, it's Angela. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous day, a gorgeous Sunday uh, in Minnesota. Um, I have a feeling it's going to be one of our last really gorgeous days here because winters are coming. Anyway, I just pulled up to the shop and I think Tony has been in here doing a lot of working, welding, things like that. So he might be kind of dirty as usual. Um, but I'm going to see if he can give us a shop tour. All right. See you inside. Oh, hi, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hopefully this is all gonna work. So. Hopefully it's a like I said, it's an awesome Sunday outside. You're just kind of taking a break. Taking a break. Yeah, I've been welding, so my hair's a little matted down and whatever. So. Well, you're. This is this is actually pretty clean for him. Usually he's, as you can see, he's pretty dirty all the time. Everything's stained. But you're a hard worker. I try to be. I put on a good show. So. What you up to today? Uh, just welding up quick datches today. Should have been doing it last week or Friday, but I got lazy and said, well, I'll do it this weekend. So. You want to give us a tour of this cool new shop? The cool new shop? Well, this is, you're in the office, obviously. I don't know if you can show them all the cool features. Well, the painting, I think they've seen some of the uh, seen pictures, pictures of how it looked prior to um oh you know what moving in we'll what just go outside real quick so they can see the window out here oh yeah there's that we come inside Let's see all the there's definitely things that we still want to do in here yet but Right, but overall, I think it's just fine. Mm -hmm. That is something that I'm really proud of him about, right there. That's pretty dang cool. We got to go to the SEMA show in Las Vegas with this. That was fun. <clears throat> I'd like to do that again. Not the project, but going to SEMA show again. The SEMA show was, the SEMA cool. show was fun. The the truck was fun, but it was a it was a five year process practically. I think doing that, but that wasn't. That was just a, kind of a sanity project, if you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Something you do to change up the monotony and make things more exciting. I do like that off-road stuff, though. It's fun. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the rest of the shop, I mean, you can see that this desk was here. They actually had, had it custom-made for this place, and uh, we just painted it the white, and then I added the gray stripe to kind of match the, the walls. And then had this cut. I'd cut this on the water jet piece years ago. I mean, it was in my original shop on the wall, and it just kind of worked perfect to hang it right there. So I don't really use that logo anymore, but it would still look cool. Still looks cool. Still looks cool. Here's a quick touch that's boxed up, ready to go. That's going out tomorrow morning. Go on UPS. Uh, yeah, we got all this tape that didn't get smashed down. Damn it. But, uh, so yeah, you can see the the nerve center here, I guess you want to call it, where all the, there's, uh, for those of you that haven't, you know, with the snow plow, you can kind of see the the design of the new snow plow coming, which looks about the same as the old one. Actually, 90, this part of it's all the same. That part is very similar, but now we got the cylinder in here change the whole mount around. I don't know how this is going to show up. Where's my cursor at? There it is. What's really cool and a lot of people don't even realize is how you design these products and you just use, what do you use for this? This is SketchUp for now. I'm not sure if they're going to stay with that. <clears throat> it does the job and it actually, for the money, it's actually pretty, it does a pretty nice job. It's not, doesn't have the power in it that, let's say, uh, AutoCAD with like Inventor or SolidWorks or Solid Edge has, but um, you can, as far as the models look, the models look pretty much exactly the same. If I had a SolidWorks model there, you wouldn't really be able to see the difference. They're just, SketchUp doesn't have the power behind it. Mm -hmm. It's not really intended for it's, it. It's an architectural software, and I've just kind of adapted it to make it work for me because it's, it's a, you know, not even a tenth of the cost. I mean, to buy a nice version of C to SolidWorks or Solid Edge, you're in the eight to $10,000 range. Mm -hmm. We should take them out to where... So, yeah, where all the... Uh, activity happens so yeah we'll walk through 
This part was actually added on. It was built back in 44, at least it went into service in 44, because there's a plaque on the building actually that shows that. So they were probably building it at you know, the year of 1943, I'm assuming, or into 44. But, uh, so it's always been a maintenance garage. And then the county built a new facility back around 89 or 90, I guess. And then uh, the previous owner, Rickard Excavation, bought it. And uh, they used it for their maintenance garage up until just a few years ago. It's actually sat kind of empty and just, it was just full of junk. You know, they stored stuff in here, other people stored stuff in here. There was a guy painting in here when we, when we originally looked at the building. Some of the pictures that Angie put on the thing were of actually when I had initially looked at it. That's, we, when we took possession of it, it didn't have that stuff in it, but it had that stuff in it when I originally looked at it. Yeah, I gotta be honest, when I saw those pictures and you're like, yeah, I'm kinda interested in this building, I was like, what? Yeah, <laughs> so she was, and it's, I was like, yeah, it's a little small, I could probably use a little bit more space, but it's actually perfect, I mean, I, I, it turned out really well. I'm very happy with it. It's it's the perfect size. But this was all added on by Rickards back in, I think Teddy told me, right around 90 when they put this on. Because the original shop didn't have, this was just an exterior wall. Because behind here, it's all just the block. Oh yeah, all the brick. And the so yeah, this, this is just overlaying that original clay brick. The walls are about a foot thick in here. So, so yeah, you just walk through in here into the actual shop. You see my little G5200, some people have seen that probably. But uh, then you can see all of our, this is more like our finished product rack here. You know, there's stuff, just, I'm just gonna tell you right now, there's stuff on this rack that is not on the website that people don't even really know about, which the blank mounting plates, it's a product that needs to get on there because people call and say, hey, can you sell me one of these without this on it. This is a, the receiver hitch plate. They'll be like, can you sell me one of these things without that hitch? And I'm like, well, yeah, you basically want this. And yeah, if, there's, there's several of your products we don't have listed. Right, that's them. not on there. These, these new stabilizer pads aren't on there. They've got to get put on. You know, these are anchor plates that bolt to that. I've got them actually on my tractor, but uh, we'll get to all that later. Here's more finished product. Bolt-on bucket hooks. Jesus, my brain just went completely blank there. I'm like, God damn it, I should know this. Um, yeah, this here's our front tie downs that bolt on. And now, with the new 80 series, it's the exact same one, but now we send along these extra bolts so you can actually bolt them in. You got a grade 10, 10.9, which is equivalent to a grade 8 standard bolt to replace the factory bolt on the, the new 80 series. Uh, here's another product that's not in there. This is a lift lug that goes on the back of the backhoe and then a the little clevis that goes with that. Here's our, our Brand X parts, the John Deere stuff that we do also actually do, just not very much of it. Um, yeah, here's receiver hitch. And then this rack here is just full of miscellaneous boxes, shipping stuff. You know, plugs for the tubing on certain products, because you can see like the rock bucket up there, there's a, that's got a, a hole for the tube pot passes through, I put a plug in there so it doesn't look so cheesy without, just gives a more finished look. Um, this right here actually is a factory 80 series bucket. I got this from the dealer. Uh, I work with Arnold's out of uh, Kimball and Glencoe now, since I'm so close to Glencoe, I've been working with them a little too. But this is actually the, I'll set this down so you guys can see it. Ooh. It's the, uh, the new bucket for the 80 series tractor that has the BX2410 Swift Hatch hitch, they call it, or the skid loader hitch. Kubota calls it the Swift Hatch hitch. So we're modeling this up to make some products. We want to do a, what do you want to call it? Spill guard for this, a tooth bar for that. And then it'll, this is the spill guard for the fat, our 50 inch bucket, but uh, tooth bar. Anyway, we'll get to all that stuff, I guess at another time. But we'll get here, you can kind of see we got this mezzanine up here so we can store, you know, more crap if you want to put crap in there. This is where a lot of the uh, 
stuff that doesn't get used much goes, you know. It's just good to keep it off the floor. You can see we have our iron worker here, some steel storage and racks. The welder that I use, I use a Miller 350P welder for anybody that's curious. So it's a pulse MIG, it actually welds really, really nice. And we got a Lincoln TIG welder back there. And then these are the quick tatches I've been putting together and they're still kind of warm yet actually. So. Are they? Well, those aren't, but that one you can put your hand over it and feel heat pouring off it yet. You can kind of see how they look when they're raw. Yeah, I think it looks really cool. Yeah, some people like that kind of raw look. I've had people tell me to just clear coat it that, just like that and then they want it. Mm -hmm. Which I've never really cool. tried to do that and I don't know how. They have to sandblast them. Because from here they go to this, the powder coater and then they, they blast them and then put the powder on. So they'd get, they'd get blasted so they wouldn't stay looking like that. And this, this is a, a hot rolled pickle and oiled steel so it, you couldn't just spray it, paint over it because there's the oil already on it. And it makes it, the laser shops like to cut it because it cuts really nice and then it actually welds really nice. And then when you do want to like, like after this, I got to go through and just do a little bit of cleanup as far as just knock some of the plug welds off a little bit, level them out, but it just grinds so much nicer than hot roll because hot roll leaves a mill scale on there. And then when they powder it, they get, need to knock that mill scale off, which it just, it makes it quicker to blast and clean up. So everything, everything you got over here, organized. Yep. This is, you know, just miscellaneous bolts. My workbench that I do, you just keep miscellaneous junk. I couldn't even tell you oil and various things and keep all my drills, drill bits, all that stuff here. And this is just kind of more of the same bolts for the snow plows. These are all your plow bolts that I use for putting on cutting edges on anything with cutting edges. These are the bolts for that, you know, cabinet full of more, keep all my welding wire and sanding discs and all that stuff in there but uh, then of course we got the water jet that's sitting idle right at the moment this this thing was kind of a little biatch when we got it here as far as getting it up and running first this guy didn't want to work the controller there's a power supply about down underneath here that runs pretty much these controls that tell the machine to fire up and actually work that burned out Actually, had two of them burn out. There's one for that runs these controls, one that runs head one, one that runs head two. Well, the only one that worked was head two, which is the one I don't even use anymore. But uh, it was actually a pretty simple, cheap fix. We got that done. Then that, it ran for about a week, and then this guy decided to blow some parts up and be problematic. So all the all the contactors that runs this motor because it's a 75 horse motor that spins a hydraulic pump because this is actually the pump that builds all of your water pressure if you're when you're cutting this is really where all the, the power comes from. yeah all your water pressure power is, is done here this is just a control motion control table you could be a could be a router could be a plasma could be whatever on there it just moves that thing around the cutting head around the table but that's where all the power or all the water pressure is built up. And that's one spendy little pump. Yeah, they're, they're, I think they're still right around the $50,000 range for one of those things. So yeah, they're not the cheapest thing, but uh, it's been, I run the AccuStream, which is now owned by Hypertherm, but they're actually been very good pumps, so I can't complain. They're built right in the Twin Cities, which is great. So if anything major happens, I can jump in the car and head right to the, they're about 70 miles from here, 80 miles maybe. It's been a good machine. But we got that fixed. So this was down for, it was a, down for about a week with that, then about ran a week and then two weeks with this. So yeah, now we're digging out of a hole from being shut down. But everything's good now. We got it all, we got it all figured out. So this is... You're lucky that you've got some, some good people that you know that are able to, to help you like in that kind of a situation. Oh yeah, I've got a, a guy that I work with out of 3M that's been very helpful with that kind of stuff. I don't know if he wants me to say his name, but I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. But he's a super nice guy. Yep. <laughs> uh, goes above and beyond to help me out. And uh, I worked with him at a previous place. He, had, he was employed with another place and then moved over to 3M about 
geez, seven, eight years ago, I'm guessing. But uh, anyway, super nice guy. The guy can look at that stuff and he's just like, oh yeah, this is not a big deal. And I'm looking at it like, are you kidding me? This looks like a freaking mess. And he's like, ah, no big deal. So we ordered the parts, got it running, forgot to order two parts we thought we didn't need. 20 freaking dollar part, and it still held us up for another week because of a stupid little part. It just, ah, oh, and that was over holiday, so that didn't help either, but whatever, we got it going. But, uh, so now we got, this was actually in the building, this big jib crane. Um, we're going to actually get this thing work. It works, I should say, we're going to get it working. It does work. It's got just a chain hoist, but we're going to go to an electric winch versus that chain hoist because when you pull this thing like this, you can do this about six times and it moves about that much. Yeah, it's like, holy balls, you go, it's a workout to do anything with that. So we'll end up going to a, or an electric winch on there so you can lift the or electric chain hoist style winch on there. And then we want to put a motor on this thing so you can actually rotate it with power, not just kind of let it swing by itself because it's actually designed to have a, a worm drive on there so it'll actually you can you can power rotate it but uh, so that'll get done at some point we got racking just for various stuff you know our Kubota stuff and then some got just a couple John Deere things here these are steel racks that I actually build I got two of them just for holding sheet steel this isn't I wouldn't call it a product but it's just something I've I've built a couple of them so um, somebody wants one sure I'll build them one but I haven't had that happen quite yet you can put a ton of weight in them I've I don't know what they're exactly rated to hold but they've had a lot of weight in them I can tell you that so and this one just got done and installed or actually just today actually just got it's been here but I haven't had anything in it till today this one I've had for quite a while probably a year or better and then this one I built once we got moved down here now our air compressor sits over here in the corner. There used to actually big, be a, I don't, know, I don't think of any of our pictures show that, there used to be a big wood stove right here, big round one. I think that thing weighed a thousand pounds and that's not even a lie. I mean, I swear that thing was a thousand pounds. But uh, this was part of a mezzanine. This was actually up and then we took it down and then we put it back up again because my dad said, hey, this, this space here is pretty much wasted. We should put that mezzanine back in above here, but it was originally it came and it was supported from the ground because the, the original main entrance to the shop was right here behind this, this rack. So you walked in and there was like a little stand up office here and then this vent pipe, the wall, I think it came around this side and then there was a toilet, a little tiny bathroom right here. But the wood from being, from all the years of being here and this wash bay, I, I'm assuming, was here the whole time, just from all the moisture and everything. It just it rotted all the wood away, so we just took it down. And this is just for our miscellaneous stuff, like the pallets and stuff that you don't need to go up and down to get. You just use the forklift and set it up there, take it back down. So yeah, this this is our drive-through bay, and these three doors will eventually come out at some probably next year, not this year, because there's three or four bays here being it was a truck shop but uh that one's going to stay that's a 12 foot tall by 16 wide door and then these other three are 12 tall by 14 wide but this way i can still back in unload something off a trailer or in the winter time you just got a nice place to let something drip and thaw out being we get these really frigid ass minnesota winters here which are no fun at all but uh the snow ain't so bad, but the cold, uh, drive you nuts. Oh, we did add that air handler up there too. That was, so when I'm welding, that actually s pulls all the smoke into it. So you can, you don't smoke the shop up, obviously, when you're welding. In the summertime, ain't such a big deal, because it's like now we can open the doors and let, let it just vent outside. But wintertime, it gets a little chilly in here when you open the doors to do that, so. Well, yeah, this is pretty much the shop and where we do all our, uh, all our work and make it all happen. So yeah, I'll just wrap it up for now and Angie will do her thing to it, but uh, make sure you look, check us out on Facebook and check us out on our website at bxattachments.com. And, uh, oh, what's our phone number? 
Oh, the new, new phone, phone number. number. Yeah, new phone number. Uh, 331-1055 is the new phone number. The email stuff's all the same, but the phone number changed. Since I moved towns, they wouldn't let me keep the old number. The old number still does work for, for now. It just forwards, but that's going away. But uh, yeah, so we're trying to make sure everybody knows that we have our new phone number. 320-331-1055. We'll see you later.